for the $75,000 signature grant fitted for work. Before we begin, I invite you to join with me in a spirit of reconciliation for an acknowledgement of country. Melbourne Women's Fund sincerely acknowledges Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as first Australians and traditional custodians of country. We recognise and value their continuous connections to land, sea and community. We pay our respect to Elders past and present and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples. Thank you. Before we begin, before we meet, fitted for work, a couple of points. You'll be muted, members, you'll be muted throughout. However, please click on the Q&A button at the bottom of the webinar screen to submit a question at any time. They'll be answered towards the end. You can also use the chat function at any time to make comments, to chat with other attendees. This meeting will be recorded so we can share it with other Melbourne Women's Fund members and others who couldn't be with us today. I'd now like to introduce you to our finalists, one of three finalists for the signature grant fitted for work. We're very fortunate to have this, these opportunities and to be able to do it virtually in these difficult times. The project that has been submitted by Fitted for Work is titled Women's Economic Empowerment Program. And it falls within the Melbourne Women's Fund, one of their three focus areas of employment and economic empowerment. This project aims to create a pipeline of 300 empowered, skilled, work-ready women who will have access to employment through Fitted for Work's recruitment social enterprise, She Works. The Fitted for Work team here with us today are Marketing and Communications Manager, Caitlin Mountford, and the She Works Manager, Liz Trawalla. I'm now very pleased to hand over to Caitlin Hello everyone, um, my name is Caitlin Melford. Thank you for having me today. Today I'm going to be taking you on a virtual tour of Fitted for Work and sharing with you how our impactful services help women regain their confidence and build financial independence through employment. My presentation today is going to be broken into two parts. I'm going to begin by sharing with you the need for Fitted for Work services and then I'm going to be taking you on a behind the scenes tour to show you our national office which is located in Bridge Road in Richmond and show you exactly firsthand how our services work. So first I'd like to talk about the need, why we exist, in particular why we exist and it's so important right now. Women's overrepresentation in insecure work, unequal caring responsibilities and gender inequality has made women disproportionately impacted by COVID-19. During the, the pandemic, women lost more work than men. Between just May and August this year alone, 90,000 women lost their jobs compared to 25,000 men. Women were also more likely to drop out of the labour force altogether, meaning they would not be counted in unemployment statistics. The COVID-19 recession will compound women's economic disadvantage unless immediate action is taken. Did you know that currently one in three women retire with no super, while 40% of, of retired women live in poverty and risk of homelessness? We know that financial insecurity for women means a lifetime of less choice, and we have grave concerns for women who are slowly disengaging from employment, not seeing a future for themselves, feeling disconnected, and feeling like their stories are going unheard. At Fit for Work, we know that employment is the best pathway out of disadvantage. Increasing women's workforce participation leads to better living standards for individuals and their families. It improves the bottom line of businesses, and it's a significant driver of national economic growth. At Fit for Work, we have a proven track record of fast-tracking women into employment. On average, our clients find work just 10 weeks after commencing support, which far exceeds the national average. At Fit for Work, our vision is independence and transformation for women. And our mission is to help women experiencing disadvantage to get work, keep work, and navigate their world of work. Our tailored job readiness programs and services support women to establish the tools, skills, mindset, and support network to become work ready. Our clients are women from a diverse range of communities with a wide range of different needs. For example, they may be older women, survivors of domestic violence, single mothers, they might be experiencing homelessness, they might be recently released from prison, transgender or gender diverse, they might be a newly arrived migrant or refugee woman, or they might have a disability. They might also be you know, two or three of those things. We find that women don't tend to fit into one homogenous group. 
At Fitter for Work, we believe everyone has the right to economic security. And we focus specifically on employment, not only because it provides financial security, but also a sense of social connection, purpose, and pride. We believe when you're fitted for work, you are fitted for life. So now I'm really excited to take you on a behind the, the scenes tours of our services and how clients might navigate through the different services that we offer. So bear with me whilst I get my tech ready and I take you to our first stop. So I'm just taking you through the office now. Okay, this is part of our office. So our client's journey starts with an onboarding call with our referral officer team. Women can share their personal job readiness priorities and our friendly team can book them into a service that will help them to achieve their unique employment goals. Next, they might go to our job readiness hub. Our online job readiness hub appointments cover anything job seeking related from resumes, cover letters, key select selection criteria to interview techniques and mock interview practice. These appointments are an opportunity for women to develop, enhance, and feel confident with job seeking documents, platforms, and techniques. Our job readiness team can also work with women to identify their transferable skills, discuss where and how to look for work, and explain job seeking platforms such as Seek and LinkedIn. All of these appointments are available face to face and online. And we've put a lot of thought into our online services so that they're really easy to use and women can focus on reaching their job readiness goals. Next, our clients might come to our outfitting service. And this is one of our, our most well-known services. So, when we look our best, we feel our best and vice versa. Our person, personal outfitting service is designed to help women make a great first impression and step into work with confidence. Our dressing room is equipped with dress, uh, to dress women of all shapes, sizes, and styles. During the appointment, our team will collaborate with each woman to develop a capsule wardrobe of work appropriate clothing that can then be mixed and matched to make many different outfits. Each appointment offers women an hour to focus just on them. Our clients leave feeling cared for and confident for their interview or their first day of work. So to be honest, this isn't actually where our virtual outfitting appointments take place. We do have appointments going all day today until 6 p.m. So we didn't want to disrupt those. So we've got a little mock set up for you here. But we have uh, in our new Richmond site, we've been really careful to create a purpose-built tech-enabled online outfitting hub, which allows us to provide our personal touch to women, no matter where the client lives. So how our online outfitting will work is that we will usually start with a phone call, We'll call the woman up and talk to her about what her employment um, industry she's going into, what the kind of dress style is there, what her needs are, is she going for a formal interview versus is she doing a trial shift, all those sorts of things. And then we ask her all the questions about what she's comfortable wearing, what she feels good in, what she likes, what she doesn't like. And after that, we'll hand the call and our um, online referral team member will go into our dressing room space, which I'll take you downstairs and show you in a moment. And they'll sort a whole lot of items for the woman and they'll place them onto a rack like this. Then they come back into our purpose-built room and we actually do a video call. So we've got the iPad on the wall here, that's how it works. And so uh, they'll video call the woman and they can then take her through each one of the garments that we've pulled for her that we think she might like, including um, also shoes and accessories we've got down here, um, jewelry, makeup products as well. And our team are really great. They really refined this process over the last couple of years. And they can take the woman through each item and describe to her, you know, what type of fabric it is, how that's going to hang on her body, what that's going to look like and feel like. Um, and then once that's done, we actually pack up a huge five kilo bag that goes straight into the post overnight and gets straight to them so they can start wearing those clothes as well. And all the clothes completely free and they're theirs to keep forever. It's not like a loan system, they just get to have those forever. So that's how our online outfitting works. And then obviously we've got face-to-face -face outfitting services as well. They've been on hold because of COVID, um, but very exciting that they're gonna be starting up um, in not next week, but the week after, which we are really excited about. But to show you how um, all of this online element works, you need to see the behind the scenes. I'm gonna take you downstairs now. So please bear with me for a moment. Just taking you through the office. On the way here, you'll see some nice pink couches. We're very fortunate um, to have a lot of volunteers. Unfortunately, they haven't been able to come on site during COVID, um, but we have an amazing volunteer workforce. Those pink couches are a bit of a volunteer breakout space. 
and they can have a nice lunch, they can connect with one another. And we really appreciate having a big team of volunteers. Just walking down some steps now, so trying to concentrate on not dropping this in front of all of you. Okay, so I'm just going to take you through the dressing room now. Sorry, let's go this way. Sorry. So this is our dressing room space. And we've got a range of clothing in all sizes, a lot of jewellery and makeup products. And it's set out like a boutique store, just there's no price tags on anything. And then we've got these beautiful shoe racks and really big spacious training rooms as well for our clients. So this is where our face-to-face -face appointments happen. We've also got some um, size diverse mannequins, which we're really excited about. And we really wanna be an inclusive and safe space for everyone who comes through. And in order for this to look so beautiful and organized, we need to be able to sort all of the clothing because it's all donated. So this is our donations hub and distribution center. And as you can see, it's a big, big space. It's in purpose built to handle the quantity of donations that we receive every year. And because all items need to go through a really rigorous screening process to ensure each piece our client receives is an exceptional standard. Um, this is all donated through individuals and we do also have some corporate partnerships. Um, and in particular, we've got some corporate partnerships with some makeup brands, which is great. So you can see behind me here, we've got a whole range of different basic makeup products and we run makeup workshops using those products as well. So we can do a makeup tutorial and we can learn some basic makeup tricks and styles for work appropriate makeup. And then they get a little gift pack full of the makeup products they'll need to recreate those looks at home as well. So that's been a really great service. But it's a huge space because we do get a lot of clothing donations and we do need to make sure that we can process those through and move them through to make sure it's all OHMS approved as well. I'm just going to take you back up the stairs for the second part of our tour. Hi, uh, our client reception. We've got all of these are um, outfitting packages from clients that have had their appointments today going out in the post, which is exciting. So back up the stairs. And then to the next stop on our tour, which is clients might like to come along to one of our workshops. So we've got this great um, boardroom space here, which is really spacious where we can run a series of job preparation workshops with industry experts. So we have a smart recruitment workshop where we have um, recruitment partners and people that and our clients can meet directly with recruiters. And then we also have a LinkedIn one-on-one -on -one workshop where we actually run that in collaboration with LinkedIn and our clients can learn how to set up a LinkedIn profile, how to use LinkedIn um, to, um, to, to look for jobs and positions and to network and things like that, which is really great. Okay. And then the final stop on our tour. And sorry, just bear with me for one second. Okay, so the final stop on our tour. SheWorks is our social enterprise recruitment solution. SheWorks collaborates with employment partners to connect our pool of work-ready women with paid positions. This funding will help create a pipeline of 300 work-ready and skilled candidates for SheWorks who will have access to sustainable employment opportunities across IT, retail, administration, transport, and construction industries. And our SheWorks team help women navigate the entire recruitment process. And then each of our clients are connected with six, six to 12 months of mentor one-on-one -on -one support. And mentor support is a great way to help our clients navigate their transition into work and any challenges that may arise. Because we know that when you find work, um, those issues that you might be having for don't magically disappear just because you've done so then. Sometimes having a job can actually exacerbate some of those. So it's really helpful to have a mentor who can help you navigate those challenges and really ensure that you're able to stay in that role long term as well. Great. So that is the end of our tour. I'm just going to take you back into the other room and we can answer any questions that you have. Um, and yeah, tell you a bit more about anything you'd like to know. And I'll invite um, Liz as well, who's going to join me for the Q&A. Thanks, Caitlin. That was wonderful. Um, 
So I can see there's a question in the Q&A um, from Christine that says, this looks terrific. How did you adjust your service delivery during lockdown? That's a great question, Christine. Um, so we were quite fortunate that before um, COVID-19, the pandemic hit, we'd actually already been delivering services virtually um, for a couple of years. So we did have experience and it was very fortunate that it meant when the pandemic hit, it didn't take us too long before we were able to kind of overnight move our team um, to work remotely and to continue delivering services without really missing a beat for our clients. Um, the biggest impact was definitely that we couldn't have our volunteer workforce come on site to deliver those face-to-face -face appointments. And we had to remove all of our service delivery to online delivery, um, but we did already have the experience and the processes and the system set up in order to do that um, online online delivery. Um, but we did also expand our service offering throughout the pandemic um, in order to respond to the needs of what we were seeing that women were, were needing at the time because of the impact of COVID. And so one of the ways we did that was that we found a lot of women were having to do job interviews virtually for the first time. They never had to do a remote interview. And we realised there was a need for women to have um, a virtual presentation service where we could talk to them about how to get your tech ready for an interview, um, lighting, positioning, making sure that you're, you know, you're um, doing all you need to do in a virtual setting as well. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Could I just ask these questions? Is Fitted for Work running this project for clients in both New South Wales and Victoria or just in Victoria? So I'm happy to take that um... Sarah. So this particular project um, is, is Melbourne based. Um, so it's for women um, that once we open face to face, which we're looking at doing in a couple of weeks, reopening our face to face services in Richmond, um, there's a huge focus on um, supporting women in Melbourne and connecting them to um, the employment opportunities that we've got um, in the pipeline with SheWorks that is in Melbourne. And could you let us know how does Fitted for Work select the 300 clients, 300 women? Yeah, so... Part of um, this project. So uh, I guess Fitted for Work's um, referrals generally will come um, from other organisations. So traditionally we've taken referrals from other um, organisations working with women in the community who might be experiencing disadvantage and also looking for work. It could be a woman's refuge, a woman's housing service, um, a migrant refugee um, centre um, or an employment agency. So women will be referred through to our organisation that way. Um, they may also self-refer. So one of the things that um, I think is unique about our service is we don't turn anyone away. So. Um, I mean, there are um, some restrictions when, um, you know, women might be trying to access services to help support them get job ready or help to get support. Um, maybe it's just not, not just employment, but other things that they might need um, that they might not be eligible because um, they might not be receiving benefits or um, it could be related to their visa status. So for us, um, we're an inclusive service and so the 300 women, um, to go back to answer your question, will be women who are living in Melbourne that will either be referred into um, Fitted for Work through one of our referral agencies or they'll self-refer in. Um, and I think for the ones that, that self-refer in, um, our service is, um, uh, you know, critical in, in supporting them when um, they may otherwise slip through the gaps. And how long does Fitted for Work continue to support clients after they get a job? So once a woman's in employment, she can access some mentoring support um, for six to 12 months. So we have um, a, a mentoring program where we have uh, volunteers that will come on board um, we provide training to those volunteers that will go on and support women once they're in employment um, for up to six to 12 months. Or if she's looking for employment, um, that she can access that support as well. We also say to any woman who's accessed any part of our services that our door is always open. So um, she might come in and get some help with her resume, get an outfit, um, step away from the service for some time, um, but then she can come back 
um, as many times as she likes and um, tap back into, into that support. Caitlin, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, no, I think, I think that, that really covers it. Great. And do many of your clients, many fitted for work clients, um, come back as volunteers and mentors? Yeah, I might um, jump in. One of the yeah. things that I love most about the organisation is we do really have what feels like quite a cyclical relationship with our clients. Um, we've had clients that we've ended up recruiting and that have become staff members of Fitted for Work. We have a lot that become volunteers either in as they're going through our services, they gain they want some volunteer experience and some often um, clients who might be from a culturally and linguistically diverse background or recently migrated to Australia like to have that Australian experience put on a resume, so they'll volunteer at that point. And then we have a lot of clients who years on will come back to the organisation either as a, a volunteer, a mentor, or sometimes even as a clothing donor. We might get um, people dropping off clothing donations saying, I actually came through your outfitting service 10 years ago. It was really helpful and now I'm in a different position in my life. I'd really love to give back and offer this, um, you know, these items to somebody that was in the position I was in 10 years ago. So there's a really beautiful, um, yeah, cyclical nature that happens with a bit of work. That's lovely. Thank you. Um, I think I read in the application you have 17 staff and I think you have, could you tell me how many volunteers? You have hundreds. Yeah. Oh, do you want to take that, Caitlin? Sorry. <laughs> yes, I think we have... Um, up to about 300 uh, volunteers. And as I mentioned, COVID has had an impact on the ones that were doing face-to-face -face service delivery, but we do have um, a very large volunteer base and particularly um, a large chunk of those are volunteer mentors who are out in the community that have been able to continue going throughout COVID as well. Thank you very much, Caitlin. Have we got any other questions from members? And could one further question, could I ask Caitlin um, and Liz, how do you track outcomes for the women after they've completed this project? You want to take that one, Caitlin, or would you like me to? Maybe if you want to start and then I can add anything else. Yeah. How their lives have been changed through getting a job, for example. So um, through our CRM, so we have a CRM um, through Salesforce, and that's where we... Um, where we track, um, I guess, where we keep um, any updates or um, uh, check-ins, follow-ups that we do with clients. So um, there's a couple of different ways it happens. Um, one is through a follow-up phone call. So it might be through um, a referral officer. I think Caitlin started the tour with um, the referral officer space. So it could be a follow-up phone call to see how a woman's going. Um, it may be through a formal survey that we would do um, at a three-month point um, or a six-month point um, or annually to find out, um, you know, if a woman has gained employment. Um, and through SheWorks, for us, it is through, um, we get regular updates from our mentors. So they will um, check in with us either weekly or monthly um, to let us know how that woman is going. Um, and we would do our check-ins as well. In terms of longer-term um, follow-ups, Caitlin, do you want to jump in there? Yeah, absolutely. And so we have, um, I'd say we're on always a continuous improvement journey to make sure that we're capturing the data that we want to capture and creating that story. I think one thing that is important to note is that often women will come to us at a time in their life where things are really challenging. And once they step into work and they step out of that time, they want to kind of put it behind them and, and not think about it. Um, so it can be harder to um, engage women in some of that longer term follow-up. Um, but I think there's there's a few different ways that we do that. And we have um, also, that said, lots of clients who continuously come back to us to, to give updates on um, their journey they're at to. We also know through our mentor program that does work with women that six to 12 months um, after they found recruitment, we get a lot of information through how that has, um, how their journey has been in those 12 months and what the impact has been to their lives. Um, and we have a lot of clients that um, we share stories with um, around that um, anecdotal um, successes and uh, impact. Thank you very much, Caitlin and Liz. Any further questions members would like to ask? Or any chat?
Okay, I'm, thank you very much, Caitlin and Liz. That was a really very good virtual presentation. I certainly enjoyed it. I haven't, I went to your opening um, many years ago, but I most certainly haven't um, understood Fitted for Work's work in such detail. So thank you very much for presenting that. The information night video, I'd also like to um, encourage members to look at that because they will be able to see all the slides, they're still available. And I'd also like to highlight that the awards, the Melbourne Women's Fund Grant Awards celebration will now be fully virtual and it will be held on Thursday, the 18th of November. So please everyone save that date. It, um, a note will be sent, an email will be sent to all members. Our sincere gratitude, thank you very much, Caitlin and Liz for today, and all our finalists who are participating in these uh, six finalists, three for the nurturing grant and three for the signature grants, and for all members for participating today. Um, without our membership, our grants would not be possible. And I know the Melbourne Women's Fund is highly values all members' participation. Thank you again, enjoy the rest of your day and look forward to seeing you all on the 18th of November at the awards night. Thank you, Caitlin.